Good morning and uh, welcome everybody to our service this morning. Um, it's nice to be back. I have done this service for quite a while. Okay, well, let's get started with our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for the second Sunday of Trinity, after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing, nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sit for our first reading. The reading is from Corinthians 1, 18 to 31. Christ, the power and wisdom of God. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning, I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. 
He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, Glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your known, name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may also be one as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that in the world, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those, those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you o, Christ. o Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Today we will continue our studies in Paul's first lesson, a letter to the church in Corinth. The first time was last week with Father Andrew. Our theme this morning is the cross and Christian unity. 
Paul was very concerned about the divisions in the church. The believers were quarreling amongst themselves. And not just petty little disagreements, but full-blown arguments. They were splitting into cliques, largely according to ethnic loyalties. If you remember, Corinth had been rebuilt as a new Roman colony designed to facilitate the movement of goods from west to east and vice versa. The three ethnic groups that would have dominated the Christian community within this commercial town were the Romans, the Greeks and the Jews. The church was being split up into those who followed Paul, who was a Roman citizen, those who followed Apollos, who was Greek, those who followed Cephas, and this was Peter's Jewish name, and those who claimed to follow Christ, thereby implying that anyone who wasn't in their group couldn't be a true believer. How was Paul going to bring unity to this church? Now, Paul was seemingly no match for the Roman who could boast in the power of the empire, nor the Greek who could cite the wisdom of the philosophers and the greatness of the Greek civilization, nor the Jew who relied on the noble scribes, the patriarchs, the covenant and the law. But Paul knew with a passion that God had sent him to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. He had a simple but profound message. God acted in history to save those who believe. Jesus was sent from God, had a humble birth into an ordinary family in Bethlehem, and he died an ignoble death on the cross in Jerusalem. God's power, wisdom, and kingship was shown through weakness and human frailty. Our salvation and redemption come from this intervention of God into human history. We are all equal before God. And none of us can impress him by a privileged upbringing, learning, personal power or charisma, or adherence to a set of laws. Neither is God swayed by our allegiances or preferences for particular preachers or leaders within the church. The one source of true life and unity is the cross of Christ. How might it have seemed meeting with Paul during one of his visits to the church in Corinth? I'm going to read an excerpt from the book Phoebe, a Christian novel set in the time of Paul and written by New Testament scholar, Paula Gooder. She had missed Paul's arrival because she had popped out to Corinth's busy market to supplement the food that would be needed for all the extra guests. Brushing aside with amusement the steward's horror that she, a grand lady, should do something so menial. When she had returned a few hours later, she heard a voice. It was, Phoebe recalled, mesmerizing. It wasn't the tone of the voice, unlike Stacey's voice the previous evening in Rome, Paul's was harsh and slightly grating. It wasn't the elegance of the rhetoric, Paul was certainly persuasive, but even in Corinth, there were many better orators than him. 
It wasn't even what he was saying. Though later she was as captivated by that as others around her. It was his passion that gripped Phoebe. She remembered standing at the entrance to the house, parcels dropping to the floor, while she acknowledged that this was someone who really knew. This was someone who had encountered the risen Lord and whose life, like hers, would never be the same again. This was someone to be trusted. She couldn't put a finger on why she felt this way. She just knew that she did. So it had come as something of a shock as her feet took her from the entrance through the atrium and onwards into the garden at the rear of the house when she had actually seen Paul. She had almost recoiled in horror. Corinth was a good looking city. After all, it had a lot to prove. It was a new city, having been built by the great Julius Caesar less than a hundred years before. And many of its population, a vast mix of Romans, Greeks and Jews, were, just like Phoebe, freed slaves. It was the place you came to reinvent yourself, to never live a new life, to begin again. And so the populace, just like the city itself, went out of their way to look the part. Without an ancient family to rely on, money and beauty bought influence. It went without saying that you made the best of what you had. But Paul was different. He was small, very small. Phoebe had later realized that he had barely even reached her shoulder. His head was bald. And as he stood to address the crowd gathered in Gaius' garden, Phoebe could see that his legs were crooked. His nose was huge, topped with deep black eyebrows that met in the middle. Paul was grotesque. There was no other word for it. It would seem that by Corinthian standards, pretty, Paul was a pretty average orator. And by most accounts, not much to look at. It's so easy to be impressed by the peripheral stuff, like someone's ability to speak, their education and their academic credentials, their physical appearance, and charisma, their accent, their wealth, their background or ethnicity. But God doesn't judge by our human standards. And in fact, he chooses those who know they are weak to show his power and wisdom to those who think they are strong. Paul was perhaps ugly, but God made him entrancing. The cross of Christ is a great leveler. All are welcome to respond to God's call, but no one can come to God except through the saving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. After the Last Supper, when Jesus knew he was going to be crucified, he prayed for his disciples and for all believers who would come after them. He prayed that we would be one, just as he was one with his father. He wanted us to be joined together in love and that our unity would speak to the world of the love within the Trinity of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The church in Corinth had allowed itself to be divided along its ethnic lines. And it also showed partiality 
according to whether someone was a slave or free, noble or of humble origin. Paul wanted unity within the church at Corinth and he challenged the Romans, the Greeks and the Jews to acknowledge Christ and his cross as the power and wisdom of God. In this way, although there were ethnic differences, the ethnic divisions could evaporate. Jesus wanted and wants today his church to be one. Are we allowing ourselves to be divided? Do we belong to mutually exclusive cliques or show partiality or hold prejudices? Within the church, do we prefer to mix with people like us? It is very easy to judge other people and particularly those in leadership. Do we favor certain messengers, church leaders or preachers rather than listening and taking notice of the message? Do we take too much pride in our denomination or way of worship, tradition or leaders rather than boasting in our Lord and the cross of Christ? Let it not be so. Brothers and sisters, we are all part of God's amazing family. We share a unity that runs even deeper than that of blood brothers and sisters, because we share in the blood of Christ, the one who died on the cross for each one of us. Jesus' death was not the defeat and ultimate weakness that it seemed, but rather God gave the victory and showed his power when he raised Jesus from the dead. There is nothing about ourselves that we should boast about other than our Lord Jesus Christ and the simple faith which allows us to enjoy life together in God's kingdom. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all it is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made up. For our sake he was crucified on the He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayer.
Let us pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, the source of healing and grace. Give to your church grace to be constant in all the duties laid upon her, while looking always to the greater calling beyond this world. Heal her divisions and make her one in love, so that no evil can enter. We pray for the church where it is being persecuted, for all Christians afflicted or tortured for their faith. We pray for church leaders as they remind us that recovery from the pandemic crisis requires courage to dream together, encouraging us all to be faithful, signs of hope in new and creative ways. Lord, in your mercy, Come to the rulers of this world and make them know themselves to be responsible only to you, the ruler of all. Give to all who desire the good of humanity, a shared will and a common purpose to work freely together. We pray that the G7 and other wealthy nations will do the right thing and start donating vaccinations now throughout the summer and for the rest of the year to help parts of Africa and Asia that are overwhelmed by the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray that the world's leaders will take seriously the continuing threat to the environment, not just in their own countries, but in the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We give thanks for those who have protected us, who have shielded us from harm or evil, who have enriched our lives by their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all families whose lives are being torn apart by sickness, violence or addiction, that they will find the peace for which they long. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus was raised from the dead, so grant resurrection and new life to those who have died trusting in him. We pray for those who have died recently, that the Lord may welcome them into his kingdom of happiness, light and peace. In a moment of silence, we remember our loved ones and those whose anniversaries are today. Marie Woodward, Vera Gamble, Robert Plivner Waldron, and Mary Baker, and those whose names are recorded in the Book of Remembrance for this week. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, the giver of life, we give thanks for your abundant love and compassion. Help us always to see you in all we do, all we are and all we are yet to be. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. peace, everyone. peace and joy. Peace and joy, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat>
Und dann war er auch zwischen ihnen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, make us worthy to celebrate the supper of the Lord. For as often as we do this, to celebrate his sacrifice, the work of redemption is made present. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word 
and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you, didn't, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of your grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. And as we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave, him, gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high. And we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on all your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Catherine, St. Peter, and all your saints at your table in your kingdom, where you, the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Body of Christ. 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 body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Body of Christ, the 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 body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ.
We now say the prayer for communion in separation. Lord Jesus Christ, life giver and good physician, hear you meet me in our need. In a world marked by corruption and marked by death, draw me into true life. By your selfless sacrifice, help me to live for others and not myself. May I, who cannot now receive you sacramentally, embrace you more fully in my heart, mind and soul. Help me to unite myself to you in spirit so that I may be drawn closer to those from whom I'm isolated in body. Through sharing your life given up in death for us all, may we grow together in love into a richer and more profound communion of life. Amen. We've got another hymn now.
Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us by your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we will share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, have we any notices? No? Read your notice sheet, which you should have had online or whatever. Um, but uh, there is um, even song saving with benediction this evening at uh, six o'clock. Um, I don't think you need to let us know that you're coming um, on that, but uh, do come along if you can for that. We stand, please. The Lord be with you. So with you. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord.